This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to, our, to Tucson, Arizona, where last week a jury found Border Patrol agent Lonnie Swartz not guilty of involuntary manslaughter for shooting and killing 16-year-old Jose Elena Rodriguez through the U.S.-Mexico border fence in 2012. The jury uh, got uh, had a hung decision on whether to bring a charge of voluntary manslaughter, leaving it unclear whether prosecutors will seek to try Swartz a third time. A previous jury acquitted Swartz on murder charges, but deadlocked on lesser manslaughter charges. Authorities claim Jose Elena Rodriguez was throwing rocks at agents over the border fence before Swartz opened fire. But medical examiners say Jose was shot as many as 11 times, with all but one of the bullets striking from behind, leading them to conclude the teen was shot in the back as he lay on the ground. This is Jose's mother, Araceli Rodriguez, and his grandmother, uh, Taid Elena, speaking just after the verdict last Wednesday. Le dieron... They are giving him back a certification to keep killing, because if they declared him not guilty after having killed a teenager with 10 bullets in his body, they are giving him a green light and permission to continue killing. What happened here was an injustice, an injustice because this is a crime more clear than water. And I still cannot understand how they can say the man is not guilty when the evidence is so clear. Right now, one is left with anger, feeling helpless, disillusioned with the law of the United States. Last Wednesday's verdict came after President Trump said soldiers deployed to the border could use deadly force and after he suggested soldiers could respond to migrants throwing rocks with gunfire. We're joined now by John Carlos Frey. He's in Los Angeles, five-time Emmy Award-winning investigative reporter, PBS NewsHour special correspondent, recently returned from reporting trips in Guatemala, Mexico City and Tijuana, where he was documenting the migrant caravan. He's reported extensively on Jose Elena Rodriguez, the Mexican teenager killed by Lonnie Schwartz in 2008. 2012. Your response to the acquittal, uh, John Carlos, thanks so much for being with us. And explain sure. this case further to us. Sure. I'm not surprised. I even hate to say that out loud. Um, this is protocol. This is procedure. This is how the Border Patrol operates. They are free to fire their weapons at rock throwers. They consider rock throwing <clears throat> or a projectile, a rock, a lethal weapon. They consider it to be as lethal as a gun, so they can return fire. In, since 2010, I've documented 10 cases where the U.S. Border Patrol has fired its weapon into Mexico. Jose Elena Rodriguez was standing in a sovereign country, in a foreign country in Mexico. We have agreements with Mexico where we're not supposed to fire our weapons into that country. It's happened 10 times since the year 2000, and in six of those 10 cases, we've actually killed people standing on Mexican soil, as was with the 15-year-old. Uh, I've stood where, where the boy was standing. Uh, the the fence itself is probably 40, 50 feet away, and then the fence height is probably another 60, 70 feet up. It stands on a hilltop. So for a young kid who is a pretty small boy to throw a rock over the fence and to start striking Border Patrol agents is almost next to impossible. I've read the police report that was issued by the Nogales Police Department on this particular case, and on the night of the incident, it appeared that there were rocks being thrown as a couple of uh, individuals are trying to cl climb back over the fence into Mexico. Uh, according to the report, these individuals were carrying bales of marijuana. They were trying to evade the Border Patrol. They were climbing back into Mexico. Rocks were being thrown, and one of the rocks struck one of the Border Patrol agents' dogs. Uh, and the dog yiped. And when the dog yiped, uh, someone said, my dog has been hit, and they opened fire. I, I, I'm not quite sure what police agency in the United States would allow for their officers to open fire on someone throwing a rock and hitting a dog, but that seems to be exactly what incited this, at least from the police report from the Nogales Police Department. Protocol in this particular kind of a case at the border is very clear. If there's an incident south of the border on the Mexico side, if something is happening and we witness it, or U.S. agents witness what's going on on the Mexico side, the Border Patrol agent in this case should have called Mexican authorities. If there was indeed rock throwing going on on the Mexico side, we're supposed to alert authorities on the Mexico side, and they're supposed to take care of their own country. We're not allowed by agreements to open fire. So that wasn't necessarily part of the case here. 
the case basically hinged on the fact that Border Patrol agents are allowed to fire on people throwing rocks. There but have been studies. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, but, John, I wanted to ask you, given the sheer the number of bullets here, we're talking about 10 bullets in the back. Uh, right. You're saying you reviewed the, the police reports from the Mexican side on this situ situation. Did they recover the actual uh, bullets? Uh, because if they were obviously, if he was shot while he was on the ground, the bullets would have been in the ground uh, after having hit him. Uh, is, what, what's the forensics say about how these shots were fired? This was a young boy who had on his body a cell phone in his pocket. That's all he was carrying. He, he wasn't armed. Evidence suggests that he was not throwing rocks. There, were, there was no residue on his hands or on his fingers that even appeared that he was one of the individuals throwing rocks. It appears by forensics and the, and the angle of the projectiles that the first bullet entered his head. The kid fell to the ground, and as he fell to the ground, the agent continued to fire and unload his weapon. He unloaded his entire revolver into the back of the individual. Uh, the boy was lying flat on the sidewalk as the agent continued to fire his weapon. So he was already down. He did not pose a threat. If he was indeed throwing rocks, he stopped throwing rocks after the first bullet, and there was no reason to shoot another eight or nine bullets into the back of the individual. So that's the case there. The, the case hinged on the fact whether or not the agent agent was allowed to fire his weapon, and Border Patrol protocol suggests that he was allowed to fire his weapon. It's really the only police agency in the United States that is allowed to return fire, gunfire, when someone is throwing a rock. Studies have proved that after about 50 feet, if someone's standing 50 feet away from an individual, the projectile, the rock, is not dangerous. Yet Border Patrol agents continue to fire their weapons at individuals who are throwing rocks. There has never been a Border Patrol agent in the history, in the 100-year history of the Border Patrol, that's been killed by a rock. In, in the history of the United States, uh, in, in regards to rock throwing, since 1792, when records were first kept, there's only one police officer in those over 200 years that's actually been killed by a rock. It's not really lethal force. So the, the fact that Border Patrol agents are allowed to fire their weapons at rock throwers is something that we don't even agree with in international arenas. The State Department condemns rock throwing and opening fire. Um, when it happens in foreign countries, in, in the Israeli-Palestinian conflicts, the State Department has condemned Israeli soldiers for firing open, opening fire on rock throwers. In Egypt, uh, we've done the same thing, but we allow the Border Patrol to actually open fire on rock throwers. Let's go to President Trump escalating his attack against Central American migrant caravans making their way to the U.S.-Mexico border, including warning soldiers could shoot migrants for throwing rocks. We're not going to put up with that. They want to throw rocks at our military. Our military fights back. We're going to consider it. I tell them, consider it a rifle. When they throw rocks like they did at the Mexico military and police, I say, consider it a rifle. Consider it a rifle, John Carlos Frey. You put that together with the number of increased number of Border Patrol agents, now thousands of U.S. soldiers along the border. Well, if you look at the incidence of Border Patrol agents opening fire, there's over the, the, the statistics, the last statistics that are available, about 300 incidents in 2014 of rock throwing at the U.S.-Mexico border, and the Border Patrol agents opening fire about 20 percent of the time. So this is common. This is what Border Patrol agents do. There are many ways that Border Patrol agents can protect themselves. They can drive away from the scene, step back. They could use shields to protect themselves. There are many ways, instead of using lethal force. There are many protocols in law enforcement that basically say that, that agents should use commensurate or equal force. If somebody holds a gun to you, then you're allowed to open fire. But if somebody throws a rock, I don't see it as an, as an equal amount of force uh, coming back. I'm not saying that Border Patrol agents are not in danger and they don't, they don't experience rock throwing. Um, but as I've said before, not one Border Patrol agent in the history of the Border Patrol has been killed by a rock. So I'm not quite sure why we're allowed to return lethal force.